Hey everybody, so we're taking a short break from the kryptonite uh, padlocks. Uh, hopefully that will be short, assuming that the mailman arrives with the care package from Jeff Moss, uh, which has some really interesting uh, new variations on that that uh, I'm going to try to show you soon. In the meantime, uh, this is a master lock number 570, and uh, the reason I'm going to show it to you is it came up in a conversation I was having earlier today on Twitter, and uh, it occurred to me that I had never gotten this on video. Now, I have had this this particular lock for quite a while, and it is a tough one. I worked at it for a very long time when I first got it. I finally got it open a couple of times, and I got so frustrated with it, I tossed it in a drawer and uh, sort of forgot that I had it. And until this conversation happened, uh, it hadn't occurred to me to get it out, and I hadn't realized that I had never gotten on video for you. So we're going to try to pick it today. So important things to know. Aluminum body, you know, uh, lightweight, not as resistant to uh, destructive entry, uh, but that's not our thing. Uh, it uses a ball bearing uh, and cam system, so no shimming is going to happen. It's also set up to be key retaining, so there's no spring back here on the tailpiece which means that any pressure you exert on the uh, plug, there's going to be no resistance to it. And this one is particularly uh, loose fitting, so it likes to turn very easily. So, uh, we're going to try this uh, Peterson's Bosnian Bill pry bar. Get it in there. And we're going to use one of Peterson's uh, 18 thousandths hooks. And this is a five pin lock. Only one of them is a standard pin, which is really a big part of what makes this so frustrating. So here's pin one. That's pretty well set. Now we're onto the spools. Pin two. We have to slack off tension here. There we go. And it looks like that's set to the right height. Now number three. And now number three, we're deep enough in here that the uh, pick riding on the lip of this keyway is actually fighting against us. So we have to steer very carefully the uh, plug back close enough that number three can ride over the lip. I'm just going to check that we didn't drop anything. Okay, we dropped number one. Doesn't usually happen, but let's try. Let's try number four now. There we go. Rocked it past there. And number five, we are very deep in there. Okay, come on, number five. Or maybe that was number four again that we were setting. So at this point, I have got no idea where we are in this thing, really, because with all with the number of pins that we have set already, it gets very difficult to count the pins. So let's see what we can do. Still caught on something. Oh, there we go. It's either number three or number four, and we've got an open. Now, Lothar, I know that probably won't be as helpful to you as I had hoped, but we did get it open. Uh, but yeah, five pins, very tricky spools, and nothing to assist you in getting that counter rotation. So uh, just remember that. Key retaining padlocks, when they have no springs in the tailpiece, become a huge pain, especially when they are as smooth turning as this plug is. But uh, there you go. You can see the cutouts for the ball bearings. And if we turn over there, there you go. You can hopefully make out the ball bearing sitting in its socket there. And uh, one interesting thing is that there are some sources that will tell you that this and its uh, related models are 
re rekeyable or repinnable. And the only thing is that all of them seem to be uh, sealed up by having the core held in place with this press fit uh, machine pin, which basically you have to drill that out, and that, in my opinion, doesn't really make it rekeyable. Oh, come on, focus, man. There we go. Uh, so, until next time, have fun, happy picking, and, uh, you know, I hope that this video was helpful to someone.